Welcome to the weather forecast for the week beginning Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Innsworth for Longmont Public Media. And I'm going without camera this time. I'm up at the Red Feather Lakes Library. Our lunar phase is a full moon, uh, Wednesday, July 13th. So we're rising about 9 o'clock at night, setting about 5 a.m. The current face of the sun shows some big sunspots coming around the eastern side, so we could see some geomagnetic activity about a week from now, for spanning about a week after that. Looking at drought conditions across Colorado, since we skipped last week, this is going back two weeks. You can see going forward, there's some relief down in the Four Corners area, and then going to the current map, uh, we have worsening conditions out here on the Northeast Plains and a good amount of relief in the southwest corner of the state. So we're still a little weirdly imbalanced, but the northern central mountains here around Red Feather Lake are drought free. Going nationally, going from two weeks ago to this week, you can see the monsoonal flow here across Arizona and New Mexico into Colorado has lessened drought conditions there, and new drought conditions are showing up or beginning to show up in the southeastern part of the nation. Rainfall over the last week, pretty good coverage almost everywhere except the Northeast Plains. The light green and is about a half inch of precipitation the darker greens to yellows take you from one to two inches and that is going to continue just taking a look at the smoke forecast from the HRRR model uh, for Friday morning there's some fires out in California and Nevada where things are still very dry uh, but no smoke is affecting Colorado at this time Looking again at the animation of severe weather climatology starting at the last week of March. We are moving through April. You can see it expanding up and including eastern Colorado the first week of June now. Continues to move up the plains by the first week of July. We're sort of at our peak chances of severe weather. And again, this is usually hail and straight line damaging winds. Going into the second week of July, it's just beginning to decrease a little bit the expected chance of severe weather. The actual forecast for severe weather Wednesday was for high winds along I-25 just east of Fort Collins and out on the plains with a slight risk including hail on the northeast part of the uh, plains for Thursday. Uh, it's hail and high winds right down I-25 and out on the eastern plains. Then that moves a little further east on Friday on Saturday, we just have a chance of convection in the mountains and southwest part of the state. Look at the surface analysis. We do have a bit of a cool front draped down across northeast Colorado, chance of precipitation for much of the state. Going for Thursday, we have a little less chances on the western slopes. The rest of Colorado could get some thunderstorm activity. For Friday, it really does move out. And then for Saturday, there's chances again coming into the Eastern Plains. Over the next 10 days, our normal high temperature goes from 89 to 90 degrees, normal low temperature 58 to 59. 90 is the highest uh, normal uh, high temperature. Uh, it will remain 90 for about three weeks and then begin to drop again. The normal low temperature will still increase to about 60, 61, I believe, uh, over the next couple weeks, and then it will plateau well. The beginning of summer is June 21st, but the peak heat is about a month later. See the good chances of rain here at the beginning for the weekend, Friday and Saturday, and kind of Sunday. We have a very dry spell, and then next week, the afternoon thunderstorms return. All this is because we are getting an early uh, take on monsoon moisture. Some of that comes from the Gulf of California. Some feeds in from the Gulf of Mexico, gets brought in around high pressure that sets up in the eastern part of the nation or even further out uh, around the Bermuda Islands. So it's the Bermuda High. You get this general flow up out of the south. You can see the grays and white coloration. Even these pink colors are clouds and blues are thunderstorms. There's a lot of moisture in place. So this is all coming around the high that is currently centered in eastern Texas in this situation, and moisture is feeding up. 
for Wednesday. Also, <clears throat> this is the GFS version of atmospheric moisture. This is precipitatable water. So how much can you squeeze out of the atmosphere at best with thunderstorm activity? And it's pretty high. The greens are above normal amounts of moisture. The brown is below normal amounts of moisture. By Saturday, the high moves right into what the eastern plains of Colorado, diverting the moisture off to our east. You can see where we have below normal amounts of precipitation. Um, precipitatable water so yeah we're gonna be very dry and very hot on Saturday we don't get a return of this flow until about Tuesday and you can see very rich moisture is back into the state allowing afternoon storms to happen so for the next 10 days the 500 millibar map here is the airflow and ridges and troughs that, uh, that in this summer this doesn't matter as much you can see this giant ridge is just kind of drifting back and forth. This is a little more um, important map in the winter when you're looking for cold fronts coming down and then warm fronts returning. But this high just keeps kind of dancing around out here. Looking at the two meter temperature anomaly. So reds are above normal, blues are below normal. You can see we get really uh, hot over the next few days in, in the weekend. There's a little cold front activity coming down here in the northern plains. By Monday, that cool air actually does come down on the eastern side of the state. So there we are below normal by Wednesday. The heat baking California and Washington and Oregon out west of us. But this is the real uh, telling map. This is the precipitatable water animation. Here comes the weekend with the dry air. Saturday into Sunday still dry. Moisture tries to make a comeback, but it really isn't until Monday night. And then much better on Tuesday. That moisture is returning. So here's Wednesday into Thursday. There's some good moisture out in the western states as well. We do dry out late next week, only to go into next weekend with another big river of moisture across the state. So we kind of go back and forth. There's our Wednesday storms clearing out here. The lesser uh, storm coverage on Thursday. There's nothing on set Friday and Saturday. Sunday just up in the mountains. Every day the afternoon pulse of thunderstorms. There's Monday with nothing really happening. Then Tuesday the storms are back. Wednesday lots of storm action. You could even see some severe weather return there. And then for Thursday, it dries out a little bit more into that weekend. So over the next five days, we can see basically the higher elevations out to the eastern plains get the uh, largest amount of rain. Over the next 10 days, the northeast plains where that drought is worsening does seem to get a good amount of rain. So we're gonna, we might see the state balance out a little bit better. And just for fun, the next 10 days of snow in the state, yeah, there's nothing. All right, so Wednesday into Thursday, we're in the 80s. Friday, we jump to the 90s. And for the weekend, we should break 100, 100, 102 area. You could even see 105 out around Lyman, uh, places in lower elevation like that. And then next week, we're back to more seasonable weather with the 80s as highs. The nice thing about being in Colorado is that even if it's hot in the day, you're down in the 60s at night for some good relief. We do have, before we go, a hurricane to take a look at. We have Hurricane Bonnie. It got up to a Category 3 over the last few days, but it's hitting colder water as it moves away from the Baja Peninsula out generally towards Hawaii. And it'll be a tropical depression in just a few days. For more frequent weather updates and local news, check out longmontleader.com, broomfieldleader.com. This has been Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth. Keep looking up.